What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, want to start off by thanking everybody who's recently liked and subscribed. We had 16 subscribers in the last 24 hours. It's amazing. It's definitely going to uh, encourage me to continuously make more content. Um, so before we get into today's videos, today's video is the X Macro Continued. So I have 4,500 rounds for this gun. So we're going to talk about that. Um, before we get into that, I've had some microphone. I thought I had it all fixed, but there's definitely some muffledness whenever there's, there's, uh, seems like multiple areas where volume's coming through. So I did go ahead and buy an external microphone. So I'm very excited about that uh, for a couple reasons. One, um, I should be able to talk without any distortion going in and out. It's a wireless microphone, so it won't affect anything, you know, visually. It just will not have so much irritating um, in and out. Um, trying to make these videos as enjoyable for you guys as possible. And also for myself, sometimes I'll rewatch them and it's a nuisance for me. So I know it's a nuisance to you guys and I want to apologize. Um, you know, however, it's my first time doing this. So I'm trying to learn as I go and I've been researching it and there is one that works with GoPro. Continue to make 4K videos and bring you guys the, the uh, topics and information that you guys need. Um, so sorry if today's video is a little chopped. Now my GoPro is for some reason starting to cut off the videos early. I'm not really sure why. I'm looking through the settings, couldn't find anything. Either way, let's get started. So if there's a couple segments that have been, you know, chopped through, that is why. Now, again, I want to thank everybody. It means a lot to me. If there's anything that you guys specifically want to see, let me know. Also, another thing is, um, let's try to keep the, um, channel not to physical opinions but to topics facts and actual research bound stuff i've seen a couple comments have just kind of been kind of goofy um and you know just some people trying to insert their predetermined knowledge that physically just is not true so um you know if you have some some you know data that you have gathered from yourself from owning a firearm or anything like that that's fine um however we just had a couple goofy stuff i'm not going to dive into it um pretty much at this point the standard for me is going to be if it's a goofy comment i'm flat out just not going to respond to it um and if you did post a legitimate comment and i didn't get back to it, it's probably just because i didn't see it nothing anything like that but if you post this doesn't do this or blah blah, blah and you supposedly know um, I'm just not going to respond to it. We're also trying to keep negativity away from the channel to uh, hopefully bring some newcomers into comment questions and, and participate. So whatever, we're past that. So now I want to talk about this guy. So again, as previously mentioned, about 4,500 rounds through it. And I just want to talk about some, in, uh, I guess, interesting findings that I've recently found. So um, history of this gun, this was my concealed carry gun. A couple gripes I had with it is the overall dimensions are actually pretty big. So as you can see, width on it, it, it's it's moderately girthy. It's just actually smaller width-wise than like a Glock 19X, if I'm not mistaken, um, as far as width goes. I think that the handle's a little bit shorter. However, um, the overall distance is pretty, it's pretty equivalent more, more or less to an M18. Um, so I really just had no real reason to physically continue to carry this. And that's kind of why I switched over to the MMP Shield Plus. Also because the Performance Center has the top uh, compensators in the port, uh, or I'm sorry, the top ports in the barrel in comparison to the compensator. So with that combination, I have noticed that it has significantly less recoil than this guy. Even with this gun having a bigger grip, someone commented um, about a, on the last video I did with the comparison, um, that they're curious on how a P365XL would shoot with actual barrel compens compens uh, porting. And I will say, I think that was a very good topic. I think, or not topic, but comment. I think that would probably bring you the best results if you were to pair it with this bigger grip module. Um, I'm sure it would shoot a lot softer, even than M18, something that's, that's physically dimensionally bigger. So what's happening is you're getting a much bigger surface area, so you have a lot more ground to hold, and you can uh, recoil management. Uh, re your recoil management would allow it to feel, quote unquote, less recoil. Now every gun's gonna have every recoil um, the same if you're shooting, it's really dependent on what, what cartridge you're firing. However, you know, it just depends on whatever it is on how it can manage it. So if there's weight, if there, if there's additional weight, like if you're uh, comparing a two pound gun or three pound gun, if it's got a compensator, if it's got porting, whatever, uh, muzzle re or uh, a recoil reduction system it's using, if there's not anything, um, you know, that all comes into play. Now, in regards to this gun, the reason that I'm going that far deep into detail into that specific segment is because this guy has a physical slide compensation. Now, I used to think this really did help 
until I switched the lower. Um, I have an XL lower. I'll put a, a picture of it in the actual um, video. So I'll, I'll insert in there so you can see the difference. Um, now the difference is with this one, you get a much thicker, fatter, longer grip as opposed to the other one that is, I believe, a 12 capacity and you can get a 15 round extension and it also fits these mags. However, in this one, you can only fit these 17 round flush mags. Um, but I used to think this really did a lot. Now, when I changed it to that other lower, I noticed this, this has a ton of more recoil and all that's happening is you have a lot more grip. It's thicker. It's easier to reduce the muzzle rise. I also was able to... I put this laser and I kind of use this as like a little, you know, I jam my thumb in here so it helps me um, kind of, you know, drive that for, forward um, down force to help, you know, redu reduce the muzzle flip. And with that being said, I'm not really sure this works as well as they advertise. So does it work? Yes, I believe it does. However, the way, from what I have been reading, the reason that porting works so well is because the car, the the cartridge is going to sit inside of the barrel. So then, when you fire it, it is going to physically have gas that is released even up through here. Anything that's physically in the barrel. So this, because if you really think about it, the gas is going to escape even if it's not compensated out of the front. And these are just you know, and these are huge. So um, I personally don't think these work as well as what you know, we are led to believe just strictly on the evidence based on the m and uh, Performance Center has less recoil than this, it's a much smaller gun and the actual ports that it physically has are so much smaller than this. Like these are huge in comparison to those. And the other one still recoils a lot less shooting the same exact, even if you shoot exactly the same grain, ammo, everything, the Shield Plus is gonna shoot a lot better and because of that i'm more accurate i can shoot up quicker and that is something that you should really take into consideration when you have a gun especially if you're in a very high stress situation that is something that very well could make you know if you had to defend yourself long story short and you have a gun that you're completely utterly you know infatuated with because the recoil impulse is is, is good enough to have you shoot quickly and accurate that's going to be your best chances of escaping that with with best uh possible results so um, in other words you should you know have something you're completely comfortable with and have the utmost confidence in so that way if you get into a, a scenario you can get out of it you know with the best results possible hopefully not you know anything catastrophic or getting shot or anything like that so um, and you really should, and a lot of people don't take that into consideration. They're like, well, I can shoot that gun. Well, in most situations, what happens is, unfortunately, you get shot in extremity, meaning hand, another hand or a leg. So if you had to shoot this gun one-handed, it, it's already hard enough to shoot two-handed accurately, quickly, and everything like that. Um, that is something you should take into consideration. Now, um, that is the biggest drawback for me, and what, hence why I didn't continue to carry this. Um, one thing that I found recently, which I was going to address earlier and I just got kind of sidetracked, is I've had this gun stored now. And interestingly enough, I'm trying to get the camera to focus, but I don't know if you can see right there. It looks like there's corrosion that's starting to build up on the gun, which is very sad. And I kind of noticed it as well inside of the trigger guard or the uh, on the trigger inside of here it looks like it has some corrosion that's building up. And same thing back here. Um, there's obviously from racking it, you get like dead skin in there. So I was going to clean it, but then obviously you're gonna knock off, you know, if I clean it real well, it's gonna knock off the um, actual additional findings. So I find that very interesting. I've read lots of comments about these guns rusting and I haven't seen anything up until now and I usually you know I keep them for the most part very lubricated and uh, because oil will prevent rusting um, however this right here it's really hard for the camera to get in there it looks like at least for my findings but there is actually quite a bit in there and there's also some back here um, I don't really see anything in the barrel but that is my primary concern if it's truly rusting on the slide and it starts to to um, you know, expand that could make its way into the barrel and that could be a disaster, uh, you know, recipe for disaster. So interesting finding. Um, I don't know why that is happening. I've never seen that on any gun I've ever owned before. It certainly hasn't happened. I've had my M18 longer than I've had this one. Um, and I have just around the same, uh, I have actually more rounds through the other one. 
So I'm finding that very interesting. And it looks like actually on the inside of the, on the trigger there, it's actually starting to do the same thing. So I'm not really sure, and it's starting to kind of build all the way around. I'm not really sure why it's doing that, guys. So that is something interesting that I think you should take into consideration longevity-wise for this gun. I do like everything about it other than I feel the recoil is excessive. I don't think this, I think this porting is, is really smoke and mirrors. I think it's more of a, a placebo effect, um, especially when I switched it to the other one. I, I definitely felt a lot more recoil than what I should have. Um, so now we're going to move into the next segment and I'm going to show you something. So, so as you can see, when I pull, I'm just going to do a dry fire. When I pull the trigger, it's not really moving a whole lot back here, but that's because I've done a modification to it. So I want to talk to you guys about this. So that way you guys can see it. I think this is a big miss by, uh, SIG. And the only way they fix is if you send your whole firearm in, which is completely pointless. So let's take a quick break and we'll be back once I have disassembled it because we're not supposed to be uh, disassembling it on camera. So, Okay guys, so now we're back. Uh, we have it uh, disassembled and you can see, so here's the cavity that I inserted some electrical tape into. If you're not aware, electrical tape is heat resistance and also this, this back shot portion of the firearm should not undergo that much heat resistance. It doesn't really adhere to this real well, but it does pat it in between and you have some contact points to where you can see it's kind of matted in there. And that is just strictly because this is physically sitting on top of that. So if you have enough uh, strips in there, how I have, it won't go anywhere. Um, and I've had that for a long time. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to take those out so you guys can physically see what happens next. Okay. Now, under further inspection, this is your fire control unit. This is what is physically in the, um, this is essentially the gun of the part. This is the serialized part. Now you can see here, it's starting to get corrosion built up there. It's got a couple big points there, here along the trigger uh, shoe. On the inside, there is a little bit, and I've kind of, kind of, I've kind of caught it at the beginning, early stages. There's also a plate, and it looks like it's starting to build up there too. Um, not anything too troublesome right now, but for somebody who keeps a maybe bedside gun or something hidden away. Um, even if you have, because interestingly enough, I have those moisture packets in there, kind of these things that absorb the silica packets. So that way they uh, absorb any moisture. I have these in there for guns because, you know, I put some ammunition in there as well. And you're supposed to not store them in, in high uh, humidity or moisture uh, containing areas. And yet it's still building up. So I find that very disappointing. Um, I did catch it. It's not forming at a fast rate. However, if you live in a maybe a town or a state that has higher humidity, it's going to build up quicker than than what you probably anticipate being that it's already in a, a humidity controlled environment. So very disappointing. Um, nevertheless, that is what I found. So that's the whole thing. We're trying to be honest with everything. Um, and you can actually see it's rubbing off on the plastic. So there's, looks like there's a lot, m several areas where the corrosion is rusting or, or rust is rubbing off into the frame. I see a spot back here, a long strip, another spot, another spot there. So several spots on the inside there. So all in all, again, very disappointing for SIG. Very, very disappointing. So let me take this out, get it reassembled, and we'll be back again. Okay, guys, we are back. So now, since I took all the tape that I had, you can see it's all molded to the inside there where it sat on top and against that, uh, the inside of the, the frame here or grip module, I suppose Sig calls them. Um, so I'm going to show you guys something that has developed that I think is a big issue. However, I don't know. It just is what it is. I noticed it right around 3000, uh, rounds and same thing through my, my wife Sig. And, uh, sounds like, you know, they're not really willing to do anything about it. So they said you could send the whole firearm in and for me, which is just pointless. So I don't really know, but nevertheless, check this out. So I'm going to try to get this all in there so you can see, but do you see that? So that is not the slide clicking. That is the frame. The, the fire control unit is moving back and forth in the grip module. So going real slow. So hopefully you guys can see this, but look, watch, I'm going to pull forward on the slide and it's going to shift everything forward. So pay attention. You see that? It's just crazy. And it goes back and forth. So 
let's see if I can keep this super still. I'm sure you guys can see that. And even when you're pulling the trigger, watch. So it's just got a lot of play in it, but look, so it's all the way forward right now. And then it, <laughs> it shifted back some and then, yeah. So it's not terrible amount, but it has been getting worse. Oh. I tried everything. As you can see, this back pin, I thought maybe the, the pin had worn off because a lot of the paint was gone on the other one. So I changed it out to this one that I bought aftermarket. And yet that still did not fix it. And then Tig's only response was, of course, send the gun in. We'll take a look at it. And if there's anything we can do, um, we will fix it. However, they said a normal amount of play is regular for these. I will tell you out of the box, it did not have anything like this. Same thing with my wife's gut. And then now it's just... And that shifting, what's going to happen is it's moving back and forth inside of here. It's only going to expand the amount of that that is happening as you shoot the gun more and more. Um, so hence why I tried to snug it up to continuously, uh, you know, ensure that it wouldn't have that back and forth, uh, back and forth rocking, um, you know, on the actual, because this is all plastic. Like this is just a, a, a polymer um, grip module. So the more you bang it around, the more it's going to wear, you know, plastic's going to wear. So um, just an interesting find that I had, and it's a nuisance for me, it may not be a nuisance for you. Uh, the rust certainly is a big issue. Uh, and I find that very interesting, being that it's in a moisture controlled environment. However, it didn't seem to prevent that. So nevertheless, this is my continued um, you know, range report on it. Uh, other than that, the gun still has been flawless. So I haven't had a single malfunction. I haven't had anything performance wise that has failed on this gun. However, I do see longevity wise, if you're looking at extended ownership of this gun, some things that may come down the line as I'm current, currently facing. And I've had this gun for about maybe, I don't know, maybe a year, maybe. So if you're looking at maybe what this will be like in four years or five years, if you're considering this for a, you know, drawer gun, safe gun, anything like that. This may be a serious issue for you um, to consider, being that obviously rust doesn't help anybody out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, next week, we will try to um, cover the, uh, I actually um, have been still working on the staccato, uh, the extended round review. So we have a next milestone for the staccato. So I will uh, touch on that next week and put some videos of like how the insides and stuff like that are, are doing um, and kind of just give a range report and everything like that. So thank you guys for watching uh, very much and be sure to like and subscribe if you like the informative videos that you've seen.